idle words. Amen? Amen. Today's sermon will be the Lord's command are not idle words. Don't take, don't take his word light. Take it seriously. Amen? Amen? Don't take it like common. God does not speak in a common sense to say we just take his word common. and speak in a sense of power and conviction that his words are true. And you're going to stand by his word. Amen? Amen. If you're going to go to hell, you're going to go to hell. If you say you're going to hell, you're not going to change his mind. God is not the type of God to change his mind. He's not the son of man to repent. Some people say, well, you know, he did repent it because he created man. No, you need to read the context. Amen. <laughs> All right, you got some small Alex, you know, uh, not Alex, but Alex. Uh, not, I think I'm saying it wrong. I don't want to say the wrong name because I love my son, Alex. <laughs> Amen? Amen? They keep making that mistake, bro, my brother. Keep saying that mistake. I ain't going to try. Uh, listen, I'm going to stop saying that word anyway. <laughs> How is that? Yeah. As a foreigner, I should be stop saying certain words. They come out wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uncle Pastor look wonderful today. Amen. God is good. God is good. Guard your heart from idle words and unholy behavior. Part two. Somebody said part two is good. Part two is good. Yeah, there's always a, a sequel, right? Yeah. You pay big time money to go see a sequel. And you go, you go sleep in church when it's a sequel. Mm. We must answer the call to holiness. Say, I must answer the call to holiness. I must answer the call to holiness. Look at your neighbor and say, are you answering it? Are you answering it? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think about it. I'll get back with you next week. Let's go to the scripture. Deuteronomy 32. Chapter 44, I mean, chapter 32, verse 44 through verse 47. And let the Lord have a blessing to his reading of his word. And let it increase in the individual that read his words. Amen. In Jesus' name, I just pronounce a blessing, whether you know it or not. Let the Bible says anytime you read his word, it's a blessing. Yes, it's a blessing. You open up the Bible. As soon as you open up the Bible, whatever you follow, it's a blessing. <laughs> it doesn't matter what verse, chapter, whatever it is, it is a blessing. Amen. You know why? Can many people now open up the Bible Amen. to find out what the Most High have to say? So it's a blessing when you open up the Bible. Amen. Are you ready, my brother? Yes, sir. Come on, my brother. All right. Deuteronomy 32, 44 through 47 says, So Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and recited all the words of this song to the people. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to the people of Israel, he added, Take to heart all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children, so they will obey every word of these instructions. These instructions are not empty words. They are, they are, your, they are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life in the land you will occupy when you cross the Jordan River. So was it crossing the Jordan River? Cross the Jordan is the next step in my life developing into a holy and acceptable servant. You see, you got to cross the river, right? That's where the blessing is at, right? So once you cross the river, you will be blessed, right? But he wants you to be holy before you cross that river, right? Okay, just say, I got to be holy. I can't, I, can't, I can't get God's blessing if I'm not holy. Amen. See, we're trying to cross some rivers, but we're not holy. We must answer the call. Somebody say, answering the call. Answering the call. Holiness is your personal responsibility. Right? Yes, sir. Now, when he spoke to Joshua, I mean Moses, concerning what we just read, was he joking? No. no. Was he joking? No. Was God joking? No. He was serious. So why do we think God be joking sometimes? And you say, what, what do you mean by that? See, we don't take his word seriously. So if you don't take my word seriously, then that means I'm joking. Yeah. Come on, let's be let's be real here. I mean, you're, you're taking God's word seriously. Okay? You know, God is not going to do it. He's not going to kill a little old lady. 
Hmm. They're going to strangle that little old poor kid. God, we are creating a God in our mind that is so opposite from the Bible. Yeah. And we will fight to preserve that God wisdom. That's not in the Bible. Let's get it real. Let's go back to the God of the Bible. Not the God that our imagination have made. Or our feelings have created. The God of the Bible is very real. Serious about what he's saying. And he expects you to obey it. Hello. Amen. And some, someone will say, well, he got a mercy. He's got a grace. Yes. But he also a judge. Amen. 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 Come on, read for me, my brother. First Peter 1 and 16 says, Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Because it is written, be what? Holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Remember what we're reading Deuteronomy, right? Yes, sir. Because it is what? Written. Because it is written. That means that it was spoken from before. That's why you go to the Old Testament come in, right? Yeah, well, we leave that alone for right this minute. Because it was written from before, God did not change his mind from being holy. Amen? Amen. If you want to cross that Jordan River, you have to be what? Holy. That's why some folks are not blessed because they're not holy. And they're wondering why they are not being blessed because you're not holy. You're asking the holy God for something that you you don't even want to obey his words. And expect him to solve things. And he said, let's solve this first. Be holy. Mm -hmm. Just do what I tell you first and then I could answer you. Mm -hmm. Why do I always have to answer you but you don't answer me? Mm -hmm. That's an unfair uh, disadvantage. Mm -hmm. You're putting me in a position where you, you, you're just making me a, a Santa. Mm -hmm. Even when in that Christmas time you're looking for Christmas to come in. You're looking for uh, a, what, Rudolph and the Red, red Moose? Whatever you call them. Reindeer. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You're looking for the man with the red suit. Uh -huh. Right? To come down the chimney. Yeah. And I'm talking about it's nice and sunny outside. You're still looking for it. I know you're red. No, no, no. God is not your bellhop. Mm -hmm. God have requirements. And we need to understand that the reason we are struggling because sometimes we're not meeting his requirements. Yeah. And we gain, you know, we get depressed and oppressed. Yes. 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 yes, yes, you know, you can, you can show all that feelings all you want, but you're not meeting God's requirement. Yeah. That's right. And your depression look, and your oppressive feelings ain't going to change anything because you still ain't meeting God's requirement. Amen, Pastor. Meet his requirement and all that will stop. Do you know that demon will victimize you because you're not meeting God's requirement? Mm -hmm. So you become open and vulnerable before demons. Mm -hmm. They know you're not meeting it. So hey, let me, let me. Mm -hmm. In my in my culture, it's a mama provincial. Mm -hmm. Let me let me let me see what I could do. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Let me approach them, see what I could do. Let me see if I could inflict them with some thoughts and cause them to think otherwise. Sure. See, when you focus on God's requirement, the devil can't. Speak to your mind because you don't get away from me, Satan, because right. I'm about God's business. Amen. That's what Jesus said. I'm about God's business. Yes, sir. Let's go to the other side. It's about Jesus. No, 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 no. You stay right there if you want to, but I gotta go. I, 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 I got I got work to do. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus would never was uh, uh, uh stared to the left and doing something else. He was more stared to the right to do what God said. And if you try to stare him to the left, he said, No, I can't do that. I got to do what God said. Yes, I got to meet his requirements. So this way, see, when you meet his requirement, then you could go before him boldly and say, look, I, I need this. I done your side. Now I need this. God said, yes, you did, son. I'm going to bless you now. But if you didn't meet his requirement, and you're talking about, oh, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. God's going to say, okay, you need all that? Yes, yes, I need. I need this as well. What you going to do? I also need this. What you going to do? And you got you hold it to a standard, but yet 
Mm. Somebody say, God is good. Come on, read my brother. Church is quiet up in here. The end of two version says, For the scriptures say, You must be holy because I am holy. So you know, there's no, listen, some people say, Well, it's King James. I don't understand King James, huh? King James. <laughs> they go to NLT. NLT. Yes. You should understand the NLT. I know you're right. Amen? Yeah. That's as plain as it can be. Yeah. That's why they call it NLT. Yeah. Plain as it can be. For the scriptures say, Right? The scriptures say, yeah. You must be what? Holy. Because I am what? Holy. And there ain't no trick word, is it? <laughs> you must be holy. For I am what? Holy. Did it say, well, maybe, um, you know, maybe God didn't mean completely holy. Maybe he mean uh, partially holy. You know, I'm not perfect. Did it say anything to do with anything with perfection? He's a being, and you would be perfect. Oh, hallelujah. Let's move on because it's getting lost out there. <laughs> teacher, I feel teacher, the state teacher, of hostility. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Leviticus. Oh, Old Testament. People say, well, you know, tithe was in the Old Testament. Now you're in the Old Testament now. Holy is in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Oh, oh. I hate to tell people, but ties in the New Testament as well. Yeah, right. See, if you're holy, you'll do what is right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't debate whether it's Old Testament. First be holy, you find that all on you. <laughs> you see, we do all that dictionary and all this crazy stuff we be doing, but we don't realize what the word is saying. It bridges the old and the new. We all get stuff that we don't want to do. That's all it is. Jesus. Let's be honest. Come on, read my brother. Leviticus chapter 11, verses 45, four, uh, verses 44 through 45 and 20, of uh, chapter 20, verses 7 through 8 says, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Mm. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh -huh. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. to be your God. Uh -huh. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Uh -huh. And chapter 20, verses 7 through 8 says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes uh -huh. and do them. I am the what? Lord. What? And do what? And do them. And do what? And do them. Ye shall keep my statutes and do them. Ye shall do what? Keep my statutes and do them. Jesus. Okay, read. I am the Lord which sanctify you. You see, that word I am mean that that is God speaking. Mm -hmm. Jesus telling you, I am the Lord that sanctify you. I am the Lord that is the one that's going to enrich your life if you do the things. You see, there's a blessing of living holy. Amen. There's a blessing of living holy. You see, the devil don't want to live holy. He can't. He can't. That's why some saints can't live holy. Because it's tabernacle with the devil. Oh my God. Oh my God. The devil can't live holy. The saints, some saints can't live holy. Yes, sir, Pastor. Because you are in cahoots with the devil. Oh, help us, oh Lord. In the house of God, in cahoots with the devil. Jesus. Talk about it don't take all that. Yes, it does take all that. You don't have none to <laughs> <laughs> then what are you saying does it take? See, you're putting God into a standard box, right? Mm. Yeah. You're telling God, it don't take all that. Then tell me, what does it take? Yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. No, but you're saying that you don't want to do it. Hello? Amen. See, the reason we go through, because we don't want to do what God said to do. He said, be holy, for I am holy. Just do it. I don't know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know exactly what I mean. And I could tell you, I could, I could explain to you how you know. Because you're fighting against it. Oh, yes. And as long as you fight against it, that means you know. A, a, a dummy ain't going to fight against something he don't know. <laughs> he just don't know. He may kick against it and f and 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 and, and, and you know, his effect, but when you realize you give him the information, you say, Oh, I didn't know. 
But as somebody that really, really know, they're not like a dummy. They will give you all sorts of reasons. A dummy can't give you no reasons. You just don't know. Yes, yes. A dummy's a brute. He don't know. He just don't know. He's going to wreck things up. But somebody that do know, they'll try slickly to get around certain things. You know, you call them slick lawyers. Church lawyers. They know the doctrine more than you know. Mm. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Cool. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2 says, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord God, the Lord your God am holy. And then NLC says, Give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Uh huh. Holy. Holiness is your personal responsibility. Did you know that? Holiness is your, your personal responsibility, not God's. You are responsible to do what God said in his word. He said be and you are responsible now to be. The problem is, like I go back and say earlier, we fight against what God word. I didn't hear God say it. I read his Bible, but I didn't hear him say it. Hmm. In the beginning was the word. The word is Jesus. And the Bible said, he became, the word became flesh and walked among us. And the disciples said, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of God. So if God's son came, his, which is the word, and spoke these words, he said, be holy, what are you going to do? I, I, didn't hear, I didn't hear God say to me, <laughs> Hmm. That's what I'm saying. One of them lawyers, church lawyers. They're trying to get away from that which you need to, to become. A church will never become powerful until you become holy. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. And you, can, you can't really bind the spirit until you live holy. Yeah. Amen. Say that. Because the spirit will see straight through you. You got folks trying to bind that spirit. The spirit say, Yeah, I saw your last night in Lucy's bed. Sure. He's trying to bind there who? Who you want to bind? Yeah. Oh, you're going know to say, be quiet, Satan, and get behind me. He said, No, I'm in front of you. Uh -oh. I don't need to get behind you. I'm leading you. Yeah. And people just say, What's what, what, what she talking about? He's trying to bind that spirit. No, that spirit is talking to him. Let him know, No, I know you. You can't perform before me. I know you. See, we don't realize the spirit knows us. That's why sometimes we back away. Because yes, we're in the place where we need to be. Yes, and we ain't doing the things we need to do to be in that place. A lot of times we pray and we feel nothing. The reason you feel nothing is because you're trying to pray in an unholy manner. Mm -hmm. You yourself not even clean. Right. Remember, you're going before God. And you're, you know what happened with your prayer. Your prayer is going before God. I mean, you're going before God. In the spiritual realm, you're before God. Amen. And God said, no, no, you, look, at, look at you. No, 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 no. Repent first. Don't come, come before, before me unrepented. Wow. Mm -hmm. And demanding of me. Yes. I dare you. I'm God. I am the great I am. Are you out of your mind? That's why he told the priest that you need to change your government when you, when you come before me. Right. And not only that, the priest got to give up offering for himself as well. Yes, sir. Amen. Before you go in and pray for all of Israel. Yes, sir. You got to be right first. Amen. Otherwise, that rope. Uh, that rope will pull you out. You hear them bells stop clinging? Mm -hmm. That means worship stop. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drag him right on out before he starts thinking. Yeah. Drag him out. See, back then, those days, God didn't pray, so a lot of people don't want to be priest. <laughs> No, not me, sir. Uh, the next guy. Now, you don't want to be preaching those days. No, you, you, you just, like today, everybody want to be pastors. <laughs> right? Let's, let's see if God was doing what he was doing back in those days. 
A lot of pastors will be dead. And I guarantee you, the job of a pastor will be very limited. Amen. You want to be a pastor? No. That's right. That's right. But people want to be pastors now and preachers now. Why? They make a good living. The money yeah. is good. Yeah. But let God start killing some of those folks. Yes, I guarantee you that occupation will be job wanted. <laughs> Every church middle will have job wanted. We need preacher. I guarantee you. Amen. Church will be empty. Mm. That folks will realize that God is not playing. And a lot of you you never have to sell the building. Because if you kill the pastor, imagine how many people out there you won't kill. Mm. This is not a game. Come on, let's read. Let's, this is not a game. Come on. Sanctification is a real is, is a relationship with God. You enter in through Christ. Somebody say you enter through what? Christ. Christ. So sanctification is what? It's a relationship. Correct? Yeah. With God, you enter in through Christ, through Jesus, through Jesus, Christo. That's who you enter through. There's no other way. Amen? Amen. The Holy Ghost inside of you is supposed to sanctify you mm -hmm. so you could go before the Father. Come on, read my brother. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 8 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That uh, uh, what? For this is the will of God, even your sanct even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of wait, you wait, 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 you, you, it's an error in your reading. <laughs> uh, read, read. I'm sorry to stop you, my brother, but can you please read it again? Sure, absolutely. For this is the will of God. This is a who? The will of God. There's no confusion, right? Eh? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. There's no confusion there, right? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. This is the what? Will of God. This is the will of all. Will of God. Mm -hmm. Even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. What? That ye should abstain from fornication. Okay. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Okay. You know this is quiet, right? Is there a puzzle now? What is sanctification? Is to separate yourself from ungodly things. There's no confusion. Mm -hmm. The confusion is that you want to remain unto tied on ungodly things. Amen? Amen? So he's saying, first, he said, sanctify yourself from what? Fornication, yeah. right? Yeah. Which means sex outside of marriage. Yeah. Right? And other things that goes with it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? What's the next one? He said that everyone you should know now. Should, should know how to possess his vessel. And Everyone it. should know how to manage your vessel. Yes, sir. Your manager. You need to learn how to manage your vessel. You can't blame this one or blame that one. Even though the temptation may come to that one. You still have a responsibility to manage your vessel. Jesus. Right? Yeah. Come on. Not in the lust of concoct. Come with me. Concupiscence. Concupiscence, thank you. Yes, sir. Even as the Gentiles which not which know not God. Even the unbelievers who what? Know not God. They don't know God. Right? That's what he's saying. Now, we are held on a high standard. He's talking to the church. And the Gentile is the unbeliever. Unbelievers. Now, we are held on a high standard. Do you understand what I'm saying? Christianity is not what you're thinking. Yes, sir. That's why some of these churches are in trouble. They have in church, but God ain't there. Because they're allowing fornication and all sorts of things to rule, and without even telling the people, no, you can may not stop an individual, but you can warn the individual. And you can hold a standard so that individual know that this is the standard that you would not make it into heaven because you're fooling yourself because you are living ungodly. Oh, I guarantee you before three months out that church will be cleaned out. Yes, sir. And the Bible says 
It was a remnant. <laughs> <laughs> out of a thousand membership you have a remnant pretty much you have to sell a building see you have the biggest church in town and you ain't gonna live your best life now that's idiotic and stupid for preachers to even say that to people you are playing with their emotion you can't live your best life now and the devil is still ruling Jesus. They that live godly must suffer persecution. Where is the best? Where did Christ say you live your best life now? Where? Where? All these motivational idiots. Where? You are leading the people into hell, not to God. Because you are fooling their mind. Tell them the truth. Live holy and you'll make it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Stop telling you have your best life now. How in the world? No, he's having his best life now. <laughs> Not you. He is. Whoever is. They're having their best life now. They're living better than you. They're speaking of themselves. Not you. You have your struggling life now. <laughs> Bible said clearly. Yes. No, don't get me wrong. I, I might get things from God and God may bless me with this and that. But I'm not in my best life. No. I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm in my Christ life now. My best life is be in heaven. Amen. 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 I got scripture. I must store my treasure where? In Amen. heaven. Right? Yes. Amen. Right? And Jesus said, I'm preparing a mansion in heaven. Then why in the world are you tell me I'm on my best life now? Come on. You are setting up people for failure. You are setting up the devil to have a, 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 big, a big payday on, the, on their lives. Because you are fooling with their mind. This is the reality. This is what it's all about. Read my brother. This is what it's really all about. Uh, uh, all about. Not of the lust of concupiscence, even uh -huh. as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go before, uh, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is, is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. He's the, 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 the wait, 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 back, back up, back up. I don't think they heard that because I was saying that earlier, right? You don't play with God, right? Mm -hmm. All right, talk, 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 read it again. You see, I'm studying because this, 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 this thing is getting to me right now. I got you. Come on. Start from verse five. Says, uh -huh. not, not in the lust of concupiscence. Not in the love of con what? Concupiscence. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, uh -huh. because the because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Okay, so you see what I said earlier, right? Now they need to listen to that scripture because why they are defrauding people. Yeah, amen. They are robbing people by telling them you can have your best life now. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't think about that. On earth. Yes, on earth. But without God. Amen, Pastor. You can't have your, how are you going to have your best life now when the devil is still in town? Jesus. I, I, I never, I, if that's the case, Jesus would have been living his best life now. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said the devil left him for a season. That means he's coming back. Amen. Okay? Jesus dealt with an individual that was caught in the act of adultery. Well, he dealt with it. And then he said to her, don't go do it again. Other things, something worse will come upon you. What is that? No, you're supposed to, no, you're supposed to, you're supposed to tell her, okay, you can go live your best life now. The woman at the well, five husbands, and the one you went now is not in the years. She got delivered. You know what happened? She had her best life then. Why? Because she know I'm delivered free from this. Amen. But she had her best life after. Amen. She got to wait till she die and go to heaven. That's where you have your best life. Amen? That's why in the death of the saint is beauty before God. It's a wonderful thing. God see them in, in, in a beautiful state. That's my son. That's my daughter. Come now. Come and rest. That is your best life. There's no worries. Look at the word best. I ain't talking about getting these. I almost said the wrong word. I almost got into cultural trouble. International cultural trouble. Okay, something about Chinese, I don't think we're having the best life now. Okay. Oh. No. China's popular now these days. 
Keep reading. Keep reading. I want to stay, stay on topic. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness. Unto, yes, God did not do what? He had not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He did not call us to what? Uncleanness, but unto holiness. So where is the excuses now? You look, it's New Testament. New Testament. We are Old Testament warning. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Are you dealing with Paul? Amen. You're not dealing with Peter. You're not dealing with Matthew. You know, people want to debate in different ways. You know, you know, I don't think Paul wrote that. I think somebody else wrote it. It was a scribe. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Hello? Can you read it for me, my brother? He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God. He that despiseth what? Go back to the verse prior to that. You need to, you need to read in context there, my brother. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Remember that. God did not do what? Call us to, unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Now read out the, 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 the following verse. Now you'll see, you'll see something. But therefore. Therefore. He that for. Well, what does therefore mean? Continuation, huh? <laughs> huh? Therefore. Therefore. Transition, right? Okay, okay, great. He therefore that despiseth holiness, despiseth not man, but God. So so he that despises that which I said prior to. Yes, sir. Right? <laughs> right? Amen. That means you, you, you despise who? Not man? But God. But wait a minute. I, I thought, I thought. I need to hear God speak. Mm. God is speaking, but people are quiet. Mm. So you know why? Like this, they don't want you to hear. Mm. Your spirit don't want to hear this. Yeah. I know that. Your soul don't want to hear this. You know why? There's a lot of things running through your mind right now. You see, we don't want to hear the truth. We want to be settled under a lie. Yeah. And as a as Christian, we need to hear the truth. Amen. Now we have a benchmark. Man, you know, well, I'm not to live this life right now. It's clear and clean. Read from the finger reading that there, my brother. Who hath also given us who hath, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Wow. Someone said, wow. You got the Holy Spirit. You got everything that can help you live a holy life. But I want to take an extra few minutes because I did, I did a little notation on concupiscence. And I want you to understand what con concupiscence really means. Amen? Amen? We need to manage our sexual impulse in holy and honorable manner. We need to manage sexual impulse. You want to say impulses? <laughs> In a holy, honorable manner. You know what I'm saying? You say it slow, right? <laughs> Ay, 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 caliente. Because mm. sexual things are the big topic in today's time. Right? Yes. Yes. And we did read uh, something to do with your body, right? Mm -hmm. we read something like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. We did read, right? Yeah. All right. Con Somebody said, look at your name and say, concupiscence. Concupiscence. <laughs> Ardent sensual longing. Ardent sensual longing. Remember Jesus said, if you look long, mm -hmm. you have sin in your heart. Yes. Yes. It's the tendency of human to sin. He says, sin. sin. Yes, sir. You see, you see how I said that? Yes. I like that. <laughs> Concupiscence. Uh, when you break it down, the con signify intensifier. So the lust become intensified oh under you pursuing uh, with careful examination of your subject. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. 
So the desire begin to grow when you begin to examine the goods from afar. Before you can before consumption take place. It speaks of the beginning. I just said earlier, but I won't get it to you in the context. It speaks of the beginning of a process sexual arousal. See, you could be sexually aroused by just looking. But the action is taking place within the realm of your mind. So the sin is already implanted. You just need the mechanism to act upon it. It's the preparation for sexual intercourse. When you are exposed to sexual stimuli. I'm sure, I'm sure. Very, very eloquent in my psychology. Rendition. Right? Stimuli. Mm -hmm. The neuron and the psycho. And all the calls. There are a number of psychological response to this. That will occur in the body and in the mind. So the mind and the body, that's why the yes got to come deep. The mind and the body is in conjunction, in preparation for sexual joyful happiness. Once the lust is already implanted, all it needs is the action. Mm. Get deeper. When you begin to understand this system, you will find yourself under the control of your lower nature. <laughs> it's called your flesh. Wrong understanding can lead you on a dangerous road to destruction. And as I was studying, I stumbled upon this issue here. And I said, man, it seems like the Lord is just, 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 just opened up my eyes to things I never thought was possible. So as I was studying, like, just, just, just five remain this book. Come, keep a sense. Under Islamic perspective, under the view, Islamic view, I said, "Wait, no, no, How does I can't read Arabic that well, but I'll read his name as best as I can. Al Ghazali, the best I could read it. Amen. Amen. Al Ghazali, in the eleventh century, discussed concupiscence from an Islamic perspective. In his book, this is a book you read, Kimiya Yi Sahada. That's the one I could say. It's called, this is what it's called in English. You ready? Are you ready? I don't know. I don't think, you know, but when I say it, they're going to blow your mind. Go for it. You sure? You, you may go for it. Yeah. It is called the alchemy of happiness. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's right there. That's, 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 that's the name of the book. That's what I just read. That's the English. Alchemy. Alchemy. Yeah, al alchemy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Of happiness. Oh, wow. Of happiness. Wow. But check this out. Check this out. He discussed how to reconcile the concupiscence and the, this is a new word to you. Irres, is it irresistible? I don't know what I, I, I just had it. No, 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 irresistible. I R A S C I B L E. Irresistible or something like that. Irres, irresistible or resistible, something like that. I'm trying to say it. I said it before. But it's a big word. It's not a big word, but it's a troublesome word. You know, an unfamiliar word. It's dealing with the soul. Is dealing with the soul, balancing them to achieve happiness. 
That is very troublesome. I believe the word is irascible. Yeah. 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 Which means, this word is very powerful. Irascible. Simple. Marked by hot tempered and easily provoke anger. Yes, that is danger. See, what he's trying to do is take this longing sexual desire and try to reconcile it with somebody that's hot tempered and easily provoke into anger. What is the psychological reasoning in that? <laughs> that's my view of it now. I may not say that word too clearly, the other word, but I know what he's trying to do. And he don't, it, 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 it seems like he don't understand what he's doing. He's trying to take sexual longing, right? Deep, strong desire, and try to reconcile it with somebody that's hot tempered. How's that going to work? And this is my thought on what he said. You cannot reconcile two sinful conditions. Mm. Mm. They need to be eradicated yeah. from your behavior and your mindset. So you don't need to reconcile sin. He need to eradicate sin, but it's difficult for him to understand what he's doing, for he don't understand that sin is something that is But in Islam, they don't teach sin that the way the Bible teaches sin. So his view of sin is not the same as our view. You don't understand that you cannot reconcile two negative. Hot-tempered, that's a negative. Wrong desire, that's a negative. Amen? Hallelujah. And I think, I think bro, Chris, you're right, my son. We've got to come back again. You know why? Because the church is quiet under sexual teaching. <laughs> <laughs> they are all educated when it comes to sexual understanding of things. Do you realize that when you watch a movie and you see the, what I just read, you see these things happening, when things happening to you, your nerve... Yeah. It's so psychological. <laughs> the cerebral cortex now begins to pick up on it, right? Right? And then you, you try to find where this feeling come from. It came because you're watching the movie. Why do you think pornography is so strong? When you watch it, you want to do it. And you don't care who you do it with. You don't want to say this position work. Yeah. One thing you don't want, in true reality, let's be honest with you. You don't want a relationship. You just want to experience. Just be up. That's why you say, I can't, I can't help myself. No, you're right, because you keep looking for more experience. Marriage, or not marriage, but being together means uh, communicating, yeah. responsibility. Yeah. You don't want that. Nope. See, so you want to be like a dog. Oh. Hit it and go. Hey. <laughs> no, no, that's what a dog do. No. But a dog, he, he hit it and gone. Yeah. He's sticking around to see whose baby it is. <laughs> huh? Run, run. <laughs> run, run. Don't look back. <laughs> Don't look back. <laughs> I think someone is still looking back. You can be looking back for seconds. <laughs> someone was going to be leaving leftovers. Hey. Hey. No. Let me explain this to you right now. <laughs> Sexual experience can wreck your life. Yeah. Long term. Yeah. 
don't have emotional damage. That is true. That's why when a prostitute gets saved, she needs to go through or he needs to go through transitional therapy. Which means from one state of mind to godly state of mind. They cannot date anyone right away. They can't. And the sadness about it, whoever they date, they want to go to a position that they will bring back recollection to their mind. Yeah. And they may feel bad about it because it may stir up memories. Yeah. And you don't have to be a prostitute, but that same thing happened to you. Oh, yes. That when you felt what was happy, what you were doing, you're looking for somebody else to do it. Jesus. And the other person cannot do what the other person did. Yes, sir. That's why I always believe, as according to the Bible, I believe in building a communicational skill. Sexual skill comes after, because if you have a good communicational skill, the sexual skill becomes, uh, it, it, it be enhanced. Without a good communicational skill, all you do is having sex. Yes, there's no responsibility to nothing. They could care us about anything. You become like, I said, the dog, a beast. <laughs> In your behavior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you will become a beast. A beast could care less. A beast could care less. The one that usually stays with the, with the pups are the female. The male does not stay with the pup. He hit, actually, really hit it and get it. Hey, the real world. <laughs> the real world. Yes, the real world. That's right. It's the real reality. Amen. Amen. It's the real reality. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. 